Hey everyone, so it's maintenance day again on the Corolla. Today I'm doing an oil change, but today I'm gonna to be doing it up on the lift because I also wanna grab a sample for engine oil analysis when I do the oil change. So this is a 2015 Corolla. This takes one of these cartridge style filters and you need one of these adapters, a 64 millimeter Toyota adapter for these oil filter cartridges. So usually I'll just put the adapter on first just to line it up. It should basically sit flush all the way and the teeth on the side need to mate up so you have a good bite on it. Usually I grab a little bit of a longer wrench to get these things started. All right, that came off with really minimal effort. I'll grab my upright oil drain while I'm doing this. If you own a lift, you absolutely need to have one of these upright oil drains. It makes oil changes a cinch and much cleaner. So now you don't have to worry about trying to balance everything while you're taking the oil out. Uh, you notice a little bit of a hole here. Some of the early cartridge cars, they had a little bit of a spring retainer clip there. Toyota got rid of them shortly thereafter, so they don't have really much of them anymore. So that came off easy. Everything looks good. It's the old filter. I run all the genuine filters, genuine Toyota filters. Everything looks beautiful, nothing there. So I'll let that sit in there. Let that drain down. So here's the cap that it comes with, obviously dirty on the outside, clean on the inside. Uh, I also like to push the spring on this, make sure that this moves nicely like that because this acts as a bypass since this is the actual cartridge. With spin-on style filters, it's built into the filter, but these are not. So we can see if you can see in there, absolutely beautiful, nice and clean, good spring retention. So everything looks good there. I'm just gonna let this thing sit for a few minutes, let everything drain out of it. I'll put this off to the side for now, and I will get started on doing the sump itself. And also, you'll also notice on these cartridge style filters, they do have a torque spec on them, 25 Newton meters, approximately 18 pounds of torque. If you would want someone that wants to use a torque wrench when you put them back on, totally up to you, but that torque value is punched into the housing right there, 25 Newton meters. Like I said, approximately 18 pounds of torque. So. Most people don't use torque wrenches on these once you get a good feel for them. But if you want to, it's never a bad idea to be thorough. Now, if you don't like these cartridge style filters, which honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of these things, Toyota does make the necessary parts to convert this back to a spin-on style filter. If you wanna go that route, I will throw in the description below an article of how to, what the part numbers are to get an actual spin-on style filter. You basically take this piece off, this housing piece. Uh, it's a couple of bolts, a couple O-rings. You change this piece out and it's, it's actually a pretty simple job. There's actually a really good article online about how to do it. So if you want to get away from those, but this was, and that'll fit Lexus's Scions and Toyota's because they did that for a number of years to do that. On this 15 Corolla, 14 millimeter drain plug bolt. Don't over torque this. It doesn't have to be super tight. Let me get my Oil sample container ready, so when this comes out, because it's probably gonna come out pretty quick. Also, make sure you warm the car up. It doesn't have to be scolding hot, the oil, but warm it up. Don't just change oil on a stone cold car. Get everything churned up. If you have to let it sit for a while, but get all the, all the oil and everything moving out of it. So let that flow for a minute. I'll grab a sample. There's my sample. Perfect. So, I did. Let's drop that. I'll grab another sample. I had a leaky injector a while ago and I had tested and it looks like it might possibly have a little bit of a leak. I want to see how this comes out. My fuel dilution was a little bit higher than normal, but all the other parameters look good. So I will let this thing finish draining out for a few minutes and then I'll go ahead and button everything up. All right, now we're down to a really slow drip on the oil. So we're basically low enough. Uh, check your gasket if it's leaking, definitely replace the gasket. It's not also not a bad idea just to replace it if you want to. Mine looks like it's pretty good. I don't really have any issues with it. So I'm just gonna let it be. If you wanna change it out, that's up to you. Uh, the torque on this, if you wanna throw a torque wrench on it, I'm gonna throw one on just for the video. See some conflicting numbers, 27 foot pounds seems to be roughly where you need to be. This doesn't have to be precise. This isn't a head bolt. 
So it's not super critically important, but you know, you don't want to over torque it or under torque it too much. So let's dial in 27 foot pounds. All right, this 27 is really not a ton. There we go, that's it, 27 pounds. So it basically has a snug feeling to it, nothing crazy. And then I'll lower this down for the oil filter housing down to 18 foot pounds. So before I button that up, this is basically done dripping at this point. Get my oil, upright oil drain out of the way. All right, everything here looks very good. Nice and clean. We don't want, we want to wipe up as much oil as we can so we don't accidentally think we have a leak when we don't because it's just a little bit of residual dripping off the car from the oil change. So also get a set of, get a box of disposable gloves is good for oil change. You don't want to use mechanics gloves when you're doing oil change because you get oil in a nice set of mechanics gloves. You're never going to get it out. All right, with these, you have one O-ring you have to replace. So pick a screwdriver, something just to get under the O-ring, lift it up and out. One time you use these O-rings, the oil filter should come with a new one. Take that old one off, take the new one, basically just line it up, run it around. These are, don't go crazy stretching them, but they can stretch a little bit. So you might have to fight with it a little bit just to get it on. You have to roll it past the threads, that's no big deal. Just like that. I'll just take a little bit of the residual oil left. I don't want these, these O-rings to go in dry because they will have a little bit of resistance when they go on. So you don't want there to be too much resistance. Again, I'm using the genuine Toyota oil filter for this car. I'll post a picture of it up with the number for this car. Again, this is a 15 Corolla. I think they use these filters up till about, I think part into 16. So they use these for a number of years. Again, Scion, Lexus, Toyota use these. You can convert them to a spin-on if you don't want to deal with this. So. This is what we're dealing with going on, basically ready to go. Just threads on by hand, very easy. This should not take a, have a lot of resistance. Once it starts to get pretty close to the housing, you'll start feeling the resistance really kicking in. So let me run this on with the regular wrench and then I'll break out the torque wrench for this as well. This is a pretty simple oil change. You need a couple of specialty tools for it mainly just that's the ratchet that into clicking uh, mainly just the 64 millimeter adapter for these things there's a bunch of different styles and versions of them pretty simple most places carry it since this is a toyota vehicle very popular obviously there we go so this is almost this, the black housing is almost perfectly parallel with this piece here so there we go, there's 18 foot pounds. Properly torque, you definitely don't want to try to over torque these because if you do, they're a real pain to get off if they're over torqued. So we're all buttoned up out here. New filter, new O-ring, tightened to 18 foot pounds. This is tightened to 27 foot pounds. This is all ready to go. I'm just gonna wipe everything down here one more time just to make sure we don't have any false negatives for oil leaks. I wanna get as much up as I can. I also wanna leak it in my driveway. Everything here is buttoned up, looks good to go. I'd also inspect, it's also worthwhile if you have good visibility under the car to do an inspection underneath the car for any other issues. So I'll check a couple other things while I'm under here just for problems as you should be doing periodically to catch issues, problems, leaks, whatever you may come across as early as possible to have the least amount of problems with it. But we'll go up top, fill the car up with the recommended oil and we're basically ready to go. And now it's time to refill the car with oil. Always consult your owner's manual about how much the car takes. It's also a good idea to verify. I know this car takes four and a half quarts of oil. I've done enough oil changes on this car that I am confident of that. But it is always worth double checking. I've owned several cars where it's taken a different amount, usually a little bit more than what the manual says. But you always want to be there. You're always better off putting it a little bit, not enough initially, I should say, than too much. You don't want to overfill these things at all. Now the oil I'm running, I'm running the Costco full synthetic oil. Now I know some people are very resilient to some of these places that sell oils branded on their name, whether it's Walmart or Amazon or Costco, and a lot of people still want to stick to the big names. Now I was running Mobile One for a very long time in this car before they started making this type of oil, but after doing a lot of research, what I found was that a lot of these 
oils are made by massive petroleum manufacturers because making oil is very complicated and expensive and Costco is not going to start an oil refinery. So like most places, they use a massive petroleum manufacturer. They use Warren Distribution who makes oil for dozens and dozens of companies. They make the Amazon and the Costco and the Walmart oil. And I've done some oil analysis and it's basically showed this is basically on par with Mobile One. So these good group three synthetic oils, I think everyone should be running. My opinion, the days of conventional and synthetic blend oils are over. Synthetic is not too expensive anymore, full synthetic oil. You can usually get this stuff $40 for two five quart jugs, or if you catch it on sale, it's like $31 or $32 for 10 quarts of oil. So a very good price. It's not more, that much more expensive anymore, and it works much better. It protects the engine much better than conventional oil, especially in extreme hot or cold. So my opinion, just regardless of your oil change intervals or where or how you drive, I would just run synthetic oil, especially on a car you plan on keeping for an extended period of time. I think it is just very well worth it to spend the extra few dollars to have a better oil in your car that's really not that much more expensive. So that's my opinion. Again, the Costco oil, I buy this stuff in bulk when it's on sale and they make a whole bunch of different grades for different cars, so. And if you're wondering about this, this is from uh, Harbor Freight that just basically locks on, so you don't have to worry about this falling off. This thread's on, this pushes on, it's held on tight. So I can basically use it as a funnel that's locked in. I don't have to worry about the funnel falling out when I'm filling up the car. So another controversial thing I've been doing is 10,000 oil oil change intervals. I know there's lots of videos on the internet about people talking about it, do, don't, that kind of thing. Done many analysis, everything comes back good, everything's well within parameters, well within the safe parameters to the point where I'm not worried about sludge buildup. I know people are gonna talk about the piston rings and whatnot, but I probably wanna hit about 200,000 miles, I'm at 170,000 now, I'll do another analysis and I'm gonna talk a little bit more depth in depth about that. That basically, if everything is well within safe parameters, there's really, uh, no indication that sludge is starting to build up if the oil is not oxidizing or the additives packages are not breaking down. I don't recommend uh, the average person do 10,000. I do an exceptionally high amount of highway, but being the Toyota Corolla is the most produced car in the history of the automobile, there's a lot of people that use their little Corollas like I do. Drive it up and down the highway. I do 114 miles a day round trip commute and that's about 90% of that is on the highway with the cruise control set. So I rack up the miles very quickly on this car, but it's all very low stress. Low run hours, low heat cycles, high mileage. So I'm really not concerned. There's no indication of any problems. I've never had any indication of any problems, whether it's tests, visual inspections or whatnot. Now some people can say you gotta rip the engine apart to really know for sure, but overall, I'm really not concerned because everything looks good. All right, so the car's got about four and a half quarts of oil in it. I'm basically gonna take this off. I'm going to run the engine for a few seconds. I'm going to, that way I can refill the oil filter housing. So I'll know that that is full. And then I will let the car sit for a few minutes, double check the oil, and then I will know for sure if I need to add a little bit more. If I do need to add, I might only need to add a very, very small amount. That being said, Put the oil cap back on. Don't ever run an engine with no filter cap on there. It will make a mess. I've seen it done. I never did it, but I saw somebody do it and it makes a tremendous mess. So basically just gonna run this car for a few minutes or for about 30 seconds or so, let the oil galleys fill up, let the oil filter housing fill up and then I'm just gonna double check it. All right, so I'm gonna let the car sit for about five minutes. Let's just check this one more time. Put four and a half quarts in. I know that's what it takes. I think I'd let this thing sit a little longer because this oil is pretty thin when it's new. Yeah, it's about right on the money. Perfect. All right. So this was Toyota's 1.8 liter engine. This is their older engine. This takes zero W20 oil, four and a half quarts. Uh, the newer Corollas with the two liter are a zero 16 oil. And now Toyota is telling people to run a zero W8. So unfortunately this is race to the bottom with oil weights for emissions and fuel economy. So unfortunately, the oil's just getting thinner and thinner. We'll see how well they hold up over time. I always take this cover off when I'm doing maintenance so I don't run oil down it and get it dirty. 
But that's basically it. Uh, I'll double check underneath to make sure there are no leaks. There should not be. I torqued everything properly, but I'll, in the interest of thoroughness, I will check. But the oil change on this car overall is pretty simple. So hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.